So let's take a look together at the OSI reference model. And remember, as we jump into this, it's not literal. It's simply a framework or guideline of various functionality. First of all, there's seven layers. And from the bottom to the top, it's physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application. It is important that we understand those and memorize the layers. So you can use a mnemonic if you like. For example, the one I learned about 20 years ago was please do not throw sausage pizza away. And that goes from the bottom up. And I'd re recommend that you take a moment, pause this, and write that out so you can remember it. Again, please do not throw sausage pizza away. There's a couple of other creative ones as well, some that go from the top down, which you know doesn't serve you as far as memorization goes. So I would just take one, make it stick, make it work, and remember the layers, layers one through seven. Now, let's take a look at what each of these functionalities does and what they don't do. First and foremost, what they each are going to do is they're going to communicate only with the layers either above or below them. For example, the application layer does pretty much one thing, and that it communicates with uh, programs that can take advantage of the services it provides. So, for example, we have print services, file services, messaging services. The layer seven is just making those services available to be used. So then we'd have a, a program that the user's running that could leverage those services, for example, uh, a web browser would be using web services that would talk logically directly to layer seven of the OSI reference model. So maybe this king is using HTTP, <laughs> or maybe he's using email. Either one of those would be examples of having some kind of program, like maybe Firefox or Internet Explorer or something like that, or email, maybe he's using a POP3 client or IMAP client or Microsoft Outlook or any kind of email program. But that program on the PC would be communicating logically with the application layer of the OSI reference model that's providing the services. The other only entity that the application layer talks to is the layer directly below it. So as we take a look at who talks to who in the order of things, the application layer provides the services or the hooks, if you will, for those services to be used up to the end user application or programs. And the application layer also hands information or requests down to the presentation layer. So if a customer is making a request, it goes logically to layer seven, layer seven hands it to layer six, layer six hands it to layer five, and so forth all the way down the pipe. And they call this, if you will, encapsulation. And it's also modular because we could swap out any one of the protocols at any layer. And logically, if, if the new replacement protocol still worked, we would still have full-blown communications. So there's the seven layers, and let's work our way all the way down. So at layer six, we talked about the translator. I left the icons over here on the right, too, so you can see. The translator, what does that make you think of? Well, it makes me think, Keith, of translation. Yeah, so logically, again, not physically, not the way everybody's implemented it, but logically, the translator would do things like convert from one language to the other. In computer language, it would be, for example, from ASCII character set, which is just one way of representing data, to EBCDIC, which is an old, 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 old IBM way of representing data. So if we had a conversion, for example, of ASCII to EBCDIC, that would be an example. If we had compression that was operating, or we had compression of files to make them smaller, that would happen here at layer six at the presentation layer. Encryption or decryption would also happen logically here at layer six. So I put the icon here so that if you think back to the story of the king as the traffic goes all the way down this stack, that will assist you in remembering what happens at each layer. Okay, so after the presentation layer does his thing with the data, as it's going down, he hands it down to the session layer, who's the schmoozer? He is the negotiator, the deal maker. Your computer, our computer, can have like 15 different sessions open at the same time. We could open up, for example, just a web browser. We could open a web browser to cisco.com and juniper.com and sun.com and microsoft.com in four different windows at the same exact time. How do we keep all those straight? That's the logical function of the session layer. The session layer is the one that is able to negotiate the establishment of a session. 
the termination of a session, and anything logical regarding two devices communicating and establishing some relationship with each other. That's the session layer's responsibility. So the actual work now has to begin at the middle manager job. I'm going to put a, a red line just for grins. So I put a red line right here, and this red line separates senior level management, if you will, from the actual people that do the real work, <laughs> and that starts with the middle manager. I'm so sorry for him, but the reality is now that the message has been decided on and compressed or encrypted or what have you, it's now up to the middle manager and below to get the job done, to deliver the traffic. So at layer four, it's called the transport layer, we have several things that can go on, and the cool thing is that once we have this down, the concepts, whenever we're working with a protocol like IP coming up in another module, we'll take a look and identify what the various aspects are and where they're working in relation to this OSI reference model. So the transport layer is responsible for reliable or not so reliable delivery. This middle manager, as you recall, took the data the message that was coming down, and chopped it up into two smaller manageable chunks. If I'm doing a file transfer, for example, we're not going to get the entire file in one packet. So this middle manager takes very large amounts of data and chunks them up. And what he does, he call, we call those segments. I'm going to write that out, and you should too. So let me go back and fix that. Segments. So if you hear of someone referring to a segment of data, now segments could be segments of a network as well. We use a lot of words in a lot of places. But the term segments in relation to the OSI reference model is referring to data at this level, layer four. So the transport layer may take the data and chop it up into five or six or seven segments, and it would label those one of six, two of six, three of six, four of six, five of six, six of six, and so forth. And it does that for the benefit of the receiving side. The receiving side, there's also a middle manager at layer four who's saying, okay, I'm looking for two of six, three of six, and putting back all together to feed them back up the stack at the far side. So the transport layer, the two major protocols at this layer four in the IP world, the internet protocol, would be TCP and UDP, which we'll talk about in greater detail. There are more, a lot more, but those are the two primary ones that make up about 90% of all the traffic that's on the internet today. So once the middle manager takes these, this data and chunks it up into smaller manageable pieces, it then hands it down to the mailroom. Again, in this example, we're going down the protocol stack, so I'll put an arrow there as well. So this is the, the king who's forwarding the data or sending the message, and the data is going in this direction, downstream, or down the stack. So the mailroom is going to put on logical addressing information. What do you mean by that? Well, let's say that we get six segments that is handed down to us from the transport layer. The mailroom, the network layer, is going to take each of those, and it's going to address each one of them. And, for example, five, six, seven, Elm Street. Say it's in Las Vegas, because that happens to be where I am. So Las Vegas, Nevada, and it labels them. Now, the purpose of labeling a packet is for the ability for the rest of the network to forward it. So it's going to put a logical IP address, very much like a street and house address, on each packet so that it can be forwarded throughout the network. When we have data at this level, at the network level, they call them packets. Now, we could call everything packets, and you know what a lot of people do. You could have people saying, oh, yeah, this packet is being sent by this user, and they could be right. I mean, that's not, not – you don't want to correct people all the time, but I'll tell you what. For working with the OSI reference model and referring to elements as they really are, we want to get in the habit of referring to the data at layer three as packets. So let's just take a quick run at this again. Let's say it's an email message from King A. The application layer gets it, writes it down, provides the service. Presentation layer does encryption, compression, translation if necessary. Session layer says, okay, I'm willing to send this message. It's okay with me, and it's forwarded. Transport layer gets it, chops it up if needed into multiple smaller chunks. These chunks are called segments, and hands, it down, hands those segments down to the network layer. Network layer takes each of those segments and adds information, a label, that's identifying the address, the logical address of where those packets need to be forwarded to. 
So we have information that's been added by the transport layer, for example, 1 of 6, 2 of 6, 3 of 6, and so forth. We have information that's being added by the network layer, specifically the address, the label, if you will, of where it's going to. And so the data is getting a little bit bigger, if you will. There's more data to send as we go down the, down the stack. So the network layer, once it has its packets, it then hands them down to the data link layer. And the data link layer, there's actually two subcomponents to this. And the two subcomponents are the LLC and the MAC, which we'll take a closer look at. But the data at these levels are called frames. So if you hear somebody referring to a frame, they're referring to the data at the logical point in the conversation as being at layer two. The LLC logical link control allows us to have multiple protocols running, not just IP, for example. And we can sort and work with various protocols that are working on our network at the same exact time. We take it for granted today. Back in the 80s, <laughs> we didn't even have IP as a protocol stack available on our operating systems. You had to buy a separate product just to get IP. And then we had IPX for Novell and everything else. Today, we have most of that functionality that's built in to our actual computers. So the network interface card is logically also involved at this area. We're going to have something called media access control, which is the rules of how we can put one of these frames on the network. I mean, there's got to be rules. What if you got on the freeway and there was no rules? You go any way you want, go any time you want. There might be a bunch of collisions. Well, the same thing happens with networks. We have rules, protocols that we're going to identify in the future module that control how you get on the network how long you can stay on the network, and how you can stay out of each other's way. So the two sub-levels at layer two are LLC and MAC, and we take each of the frames when it's our turn to talk on this network, and we hand them down to the physical layer, which down at this layer is simply bits. It's a whole bunch of bits being sent. So the protocol analyzer, this particular one, is showing us from the layer one up to the higher layers of the OSI reference model. This is representing that we have this frame. In fact, these two lines, the line I've highlighted and the one above it, are representing that we've caught some information, and here's the frame information for it. It has a source address and a destination address. In fact, let me open that up. And this right here is the MAC address of 00E01C3C17C2. It's 48 bits long. It happens to be in hexadecimal, base 16. And... That's the destination of this individual frame. That's the layer two address. It's from this source address at layer two. So as far as what information did layer two add, that would be the source and destination MAC addresses. Let's take a look at layer three. This information right here is all about layer three header information. It's saying that it's sourced from the IP address of this guy, 74531403153. Really, that just represents a street and a house on that street. That's what that's representing. And the destination is 101014. And we'll take a look at IP addressing as well in the IP module. But that's an example of the information or the header information that layer three would add. So as a review, this the top two lines, including this Ethernet two, is regarding the frame at layer two. The internet protocol IP header is referring to information about layer three. And TCP is referring to information at layer four of the OSI reference model. So OSI layer four TCP, or the transport layer, is nervous. This is the middle manager again. And his job is to make sure the data gets there reliably in the case of TCP. And so you'll notice that we might have even some sequence numbers here. 491, he's keeping track of all the data that goes back and forth. UDP, on the other hand, could care less about sequencing and making sure data gets there reliably. But at this point in the game, I just wanted to share with you the representation of some of those headers that are being added. And then at the upper layers, this represents layers 5, 6, and 7. Here it looks like we have a response code of 221, and it looks like, we're oh, we're closing the connection. So that function right there is more of a session layer function about opening, establishing, and closing sessions. So as a review, this is levels five, six, and seven being highlighted. TCP is layer four for segments. IP is an example of layer three with packets. And the top two are representing the frames at layer two. 